Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Christmas, because it's almost Christmas, and there's a lot of bass fishermen looking for gear for Christmas. I actually had a question from Randy Collins, I believe, I hope I got your name right, uh, asking me what he should buy somebody who loves bass fishing for Christmas. So, this is my two cents. I hope you like it. All right. Bait number one is going to be the jig. Now you guys know I've been promising for a while that I'm going to try and figure out how to fish the jig. And I've not really done it. I keep saying every year I'm going to try. I know that these catch big fish. I see it all the time and I don't know why I don't throw it more. Uh, this one I believe is a Booyah. Um, it's an Arky style head, which is kind of something that I'd recommend because Arky is like the all around kind of jig. Um, if you haven't seen my what if I threw a jig video, I'll try and throw it up kind of in the top here. Uh, but jigs are great because you can use them to flip, pitch, skip. Um, a lot of the time you're going to be throwing it with a plastic trailer on the end of it, you know, give it some claws. Uh, if you're swimming it, you can throw a, uh, a little swim bait on the end of it uh, for a kicking tail motion. So it's very versatile, can be used all over the place. And if you really want to keep it simple, uh, Gerald Swindle always says, you know, if, uh, if I'm not catching them on a black jig, I'll just throw a brown jig. And if I'm not catching them on the brown jig, I'll throw the black jig. So keep it simple. Brown, black is probably what I would suggest too. Green pumpkin maybe. Um, and then just grab yourself some plastics or throw on the end of it. Um, Perfect Jig is another great place. I really would want to push his stuff. He's a local boy. Uh, sells in a lot of local tackle shops. So if you want to buy it local, uh, you can buy it from his website. You can buy it from John Blaze Tackle Box. Uh, the Perfect Jig even brings his perfect trailer so you can match them up. Check out her jig. All right, number two bait that I would recommend is any type of plastic worm, which I just dropped on the ground. You guys all know my favorite worm is the Sanko. Um, I usually try and stick with some sort of a green pumpkin. Um, the other one, I'll give you a little, little tip. This is a really good color. Uh, this has a orange. I, I actually don't like the green all that much, but I like having that orange on the bottom. I found in some of the upper, like... Muskoka type lakes with the tea colored water. I, I find that this color works really well But you have the different sizes of course and then you can get worms that have appendages on them uh, You got lizards and stuff like that. They're close to worms um, Appendages sometimes work, uh, but honestly, I just like Sankos. I'll switch between the the seven and five and sometimes I'll bite them down even smaller than that, but Sankos are my number one and What's great about Sankos is you can rig them so many different ways. So, for an example, you could throw some lead on the end of it, um, and you can actually use that as a flipping bait. You can rig it weedless, so you can toss it anywhere, and it won't get hung up. That's great for flipping docks, especially if you new guys are always getting hung up on docks. Rigging it weedless, tossing it against docks, that's a good one. Uh, reeds and everything else. Sinkos go right through it, and you can rig them a couple of ways. You can rig them with the hook, like I say, weedless, um, just like that. If you have an, um, uh, uh, an octopus hook, uh, you can rig it wacky like that uh nico rigs i mean you can fish these worms any number of ways this is another very very versatile bait green pumpkins are always good uh so start out with green pumpkins branch out from there you know add red flick or whatever um, but yeah senkos any type of worm um funny story was we we're throwing um senkos you know kind of a lot about that size in and around lake dalrymple on a club tournament and i don't know if i should say this but uh, one of the guys that was fishing there actually threw a 10 inch worm, which is huge, right? Like 10 inches. Like that's a, that's a, that's a big worm. Um, it's just a ribbon tail worm and he caught the biggest bass, uh, won the tournament. So don't be afraid of size, I guess is what I'm going at. Whatever. Buy some Senkos. They're good. All right. Next up, spinner baits. You guys know how I feel about spinner baits. I like them just about as much as I like uh senkos i guess yeah so that is my favorite spinnerbait right there i'm gonna set this box of spinnerbaits down but this is all beat up i don't know how how much you guys can see but there's like there's paint missing off the top and 
yeah, the wire's not really all that straight anymore, but it's caught me a lot of fish, this particular bait. Um, this is a, a, a silicone uh, skirt. Uh, it's got a nice big sharp hook. Two willow leaf blades. This is a Blackfly Lures uh, spinnerbait, and I, I buy them exclusively, to be honest with you. I have other ones over in the box there, but I keep coming back to this one, this white spinnerbait. I use it all kinds, sorry, I use it all different types of the year. So springtime is like the best I find for this thing. Bass, pike, whatever, like everything bites this. I just kind of went a little freaky there, but everything bites this and you can use it all year round. It's perfect in weeds, reeds. It doesn't get hung up all that much. Um, you can fish it slow, fast. I mean, this thing really is one of my favorite baits. If fish are biting and they'll chase uh, and bite this right here. So get yourself some of these Blackfly Lures. Uh, I think Trombley sells them, but you can also buy them online. Uh, get you a few. All right, right after spinner baits is crankbaits. Another moving bait. This is, uh, I believe, a Strike Master. Strike Master, sorry, that's an auger. A Strike King. Uh, this is a sexy shad, I believe. Chrome sexy shad. Uh, KVD uh, square bow. So this is a, a shallow running crankbait, but again, you can get crankbaits in all kinds of different depths, right? So crankbaits. Um, you can do the upper quadrant of the water with the square bill. Uh, and then as that bill gets a little bit longer and a little bit wider, you go a little bit deeper. Uh, usually the package will say how deep it is. So uh, you can tell by just looking at the package. One thing that I will say though is small crankbaits sometimes perform very, very well. Um, this is, this is the same idea crankbait. This is actually the first crankbait I ever bought, it was actually an accidental bait. Um, I thought when I bought it, sorry, I'm caught up here. I thought it was originally going to buy, be buying this size crankbait, but I bought this size crankbait. Uh, but I threw it anyway. I decided to throw it out there um, and I actually caught quite a few decent sized fish just on this little, little bait uh, on Lake Simcoe. So don't be afraid to go little if you need to, but crankbaits, that's another great one. Um, again, I really, really like the sexy shad. Um, everybody's kind of got their own, um, play around, find something that works well for you. But, uh, I like natural colors, whites, blacks, that kind of thing. But I've had good luck with lipless reds too. So crankbaits. All right. I think we're at number five, number five, number five is top water and top water is the best kind. We love the blow ups, right? So I got a few here. Uh, first one. I don't throw this one very often, but it's your simple walking bait, right? This one happens to have a lot of rattle to it, uh, but it just walks through the water. The other one is the one I use the most, and that is a popper. It has got to have the feather tail. This one is a Rapla X Rap Pop 07. Uh, I'm not sure if 07 is the color or not, but this one here is kind of like transparent on the bottom to a light green to a dark green back. I don't know why, I just have a lot of faith in this. And if you're not sure what a popper does, this little crevice in the front, uh, that catches water and it makes a blooping sound. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Next is a frog. Um, now this one's kind of a cross, right? So this one has a little bit of a pomp on the front uh, and they have usually skirted legs, but Live Target actually has one now where it has actual legs that, that move. Uh, it's got two hooks on the top here and that's, what, that's what's gonna catch you. I like natural colors. I like regular frogs, something with white or black on the bottom. Uh, yellow's close enough, um, but yeah. Just a frog. That's great for like super, super thick stuff, right? So places you can't throw poppers and walking baits and anything with trebles, right? This will sit on top of that, get through it without getting hung up too bad. Now the last one is pretty new. It's the same idea as the frog, but it's Lunker Hunt's new spider. And I'm showing it to you because I think it's cool. I have not used it, uh, but it is super cool. Look at that. Pretty realistic. Um, it's got legs that, that 
that move individually. Uh, it's got the same two hooks that you'd see on a frog. And uh, yeah, this one's one of the smaller ones. They do have a bigger one out too. But if you're looking for something new in a topwater, maybe that nobody, uh, I shouldn't say nobody, that maybe your average bass angler doesn't have just yet, check out the spider because it just came out the beginning of this year at iCast. There you go. All right, so I was going to stop at five, but I got two more for you. And then actually I got a whole bunch from you guys that uh, I'm sure I've missed. So we'll take a look at those too. But the second last one is a jerkbait. This particular jerkbait has always done well for me. This is a Rapella as well. Uh, it is uh, an X-Wrap, I think, as well. Um, this is a Ghost Olive color. So basically, when I go to buy it, I just look up Ghost Olive uh, Rapella 3-hook. It has to be the 3-hook. Um, I suppose you go to the 2 if you wanted to go a little bit more finesse. But this guy, and I wish you guys could see it. Um, you probably can't make it out. But this thing is beat up i have caught a ton of fish on this particular bait and actually let me put these down actually a little story about this bait uh this particular bait as well um doing a, a berry bassmaster tournament god had to be two years ago maybe we were on balsam lake um and we were I, I, we were fishing what i think it was wind blown points um and this guy here caught all my fish uh pretty sure i came in second on that tournament maybe first i can't remember uh as a co-angler um but this did it for me uh I, I, I wish i could say more i wish i could hype it up as much as i love this jerkbait but if i plan on throwing a jerkbait this is always the first one i tie on uh and i usually almost always leave it on my rod i almost never switch it out unless you know whatever I'm just not catching them on there, uh, but usually I'll switch to another bait before I'll switch to another jerk bait. So yeah, jerk bait, ghost olive, rapella, three hook. It's a good one, I promise. The very last one is super broad, so I apologize, but it is a creature bait. This one is a, a craw in particular. Um, I usually do a lot of craws. Last year is when I started throwing creature baits and I was fishing Simcoe and it was just before the boat ramp. There's this little drop off before the boat ramp. And I would just kill in the last, I think it was like 15 minutes before uh, I had to head in. And I just threw this on this, this exact rig. This is just uh, a quarter ounce bullet weight uh, pegged. And then I think that's a number four offset shank extra wide gap hook. Um, and I just throw this weedless just like you would with the Sanko that we talked about earlier and literally just cast it out and creep it back oh so slow you want to be able to feel that dragon um, and just kind of slow 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 um, and you know I caught one fish it was such a good fish uh, I'm pretty sure I lost it if I remember the video correctly um, but yeah once I saw that fish, I was like, I'm going to throw this. This is it. So creature baits, any type of creature baits. Before this, I had a lizard, a KVD lizard. I, I don't know what it was. Uh, it was a coffee-scented lizard, and I was throwing that in cooch, and same deal. I did really, really well doing the exact same thing with it. So creature baits, I love them, I love them, I love them, and soft plastics are always my favorite. I like soft plastics recently more so than I have hard-bodied baits, so... Yeah, I feel like I'm just talking now. So let's jump over to what you guys said. Let me grab my phone and we'll give you some more ideas maybe of what you could get this Christmas for somebody that's a bass fisherman and needs some more taco. All right, guys, before we get started, I just, I really want to thank every one of you guys. Anybody that replies to me, chats with me, just, I love talking fishing and I love talking fishing with you guys. So let's go over some of these ideas that you guys had. Uh, and see if they match up with some of mine, and if not, maybe offer you a few things that I didn't offer you. All right, starting out the jam is Old Row Outdoors. Jesus, man, this guy, all he does is put these stupid emoticons in here. <sighs> all right, Billy Joe 03 says, good. I don't even know why if I should ask these questions. Ethan Pollock said frogs. Yes, frogs. Good one. Yes, we've done frogs. Frogs are good. Topwater. Tanner showed up with a Sanko. 
You know I love Sankos. I think him and I would get along very well out on the water. Billy Joel 03 gave me a upside down swallowy face. Old row outdoors, sending me pictures of fish. And a shout out. He wanted a shout out. Follow old row. Okay. Jacob Brosh says a rod and a reel. That's actually, yeah, that's that's pretty important. You you probably need that to catch the bass. Smart thinking, Jacob. Another smart idea was probably water. Thank you, Mr. Haha. -ha. Yes, you would need water to catch bass. Miss Fishmore, yes, O-ring tool for wacky rigs. You're going to need that with them Senkos. Go, Artie, go. Which, by the way, if you remember Artie, he was the winner of the very first bass tournament that we ever did. So if you want to hear from a guy, this guy is the one soft plastic stick bait, a.k.a. Sanko. You heard her here first. Aiden, of course, is hitting Sankos as well, but he threw in Ned Riggs. Ellie says hands. Well, yeah, I suppose we should throw a net in there too, because, you know, whatever. You guys think you're so funny. Cole 473A says a topwater frog. Again, we've covered that. So far, nothing too new other than the Ned Rig, I think. And that's it. I think that's all of them. I want to appreciate everybody that answered the questions, even the silly ones. I like the silly ones too, as much as I show off that I don't. I kind of like the silly ones. So thanks for everybody joining me here, answering the questions. If you have some ideas that I haven't covered, throw them down below for any of the bass fishermen out there looking to catch some lures for this Christmas. I think I meant by throw them down below. Let everybody know what they should be throwing. Whopper blobber. See you guys. Thanks.